Dr. Ron Daniels, who stepped out, he always talks about the civil rights movement and how these guys pressed on and on and on and insisted every step of the way until they got where they needed to get. And look, this country in which you live is the free world, there are still challenges, but you have moved miles. But it took work. People had to work as hard as they possibly could. You guys in the diaspora have your challenges too, your frustrations. I am hoping that you realize you need to keep moving. You need to keep pushing as much as you possibly can. I want to annoy you people in just like five minutes. Huh? Yeah, I want to, to annoy you some more. Because um, already you are annoyed. Everyone in the diaspora has got a story. You have a reason, a cogent reason, why you left Uganda. Otherwise, you would have to be home with your families. But for one reason or another, it could be an economic reason. Either you failed to find a job, or you needed better, you were struggling to make anything. And so you left the country. For some of you, it's political reasons. Because you are being hounded back home. And for your own safety, you needed to leave. Some of you are here, some are in several other countries. Some of you needed better health care for you to leave. Ashraf here, and several other examples. So you have got a reason why you are not in Uganda. And I am sure that reason annoys you enough to work hard to see that our country gets better. Mr. President, yesterday we Adam Regent. A couple of things. We talked about healthcare, education, we talked about infrastructure and uh, what we ought to do to fix these things because they are fixable. At least when we take charge. And normally the resounding question is where are the resources going to come from? The SG has just reminded us in Uganda we lose over 10 trillion shillings per year to corruption. 10 trillion is about half the money that you are recording in Uganda. Because in the last financial year, the target of URA was to collect 24 trillion, they collected 23 trillion. Now, 10 is stolen. Forget the huge budget that you see at 72 trillion, which is an inflated puffed up fee. Of course, most of that is going to be borrowed and so on and so forth. But half of the money that they collect in our country, you think about it. Half is stolen. What, what much can that money do? When I, I wanted to cite a few examples. Some, when I was chairing, the committee are chairing, some, some of the prevailing situations. Which show you that when we talk about this, and by the way, the 10 trillion figure is not our figure. That's a figure for government of Uganda. The report of the Inspector General of Government. So that's a report of government. And for, for those that have been following the journalists I am, whenever government gives you a feature, you know that they have either lessened it so that they don't look as bad as government. So you can push that figure even higher. The amount that is stolen. So when you hear people say we actually don't have money, we do have money. One of the entities we investigated was Uganda Railways Corporation. These people bought locomotives. First of all, very old locomotives. In comparison to what they were meant to buy. And they bought them a lot more expensively. And they didn't go through procurement regulations as they should have. So they spent 48 billion to buy locomotives. Vigari, Yomuka. They brought them home, they failed to function. Then they told us, you see, the rails need to be tweaked a little bit and so on. They tried to do that. They moved one of them and they think the rail it went off the rail. 48 billion. So I insisted together with the team as leading. I said, this thing here, no. So we made a lot of noise. Eventually the MD was fired and the entire board. But I said, our quest was not just for these people to get fired. I want this money recovered. That hasn't happened to date. When we were handling Uganda Land Commission, some of you have got land challenges back home. 
you buy land and then before you know it, somebody bought it before you. But you paid money. There's a lot of land fraud back home. So there are people who they go to villages. There's many parts of our country whose land is not titled. So these people go to like Koima or whatever. And then like five square miles, villages and villages of people. There's no title. And so they go and forge titles. And then they come and say, we want to displace you people. Because we are the ones with title. But these people have been on that land for over 100 years, dating back to the other generations, yeah? But somebody saying, I've got the title. Now, they then get into cahoots with government officials to say, okay, now, since this person has got title, government should save these people so that they are not sent off their land. Government should now pay this person who has got title so that those people are saved. But it's an entire syndicate. So one of those cases we discovered, they, some lawyers also thought they were very smart. I mean, by the way, Mr. President, congratulations again. I was teasing him yesterday and told him, you see, this profession you have come into, you find seniors like us. So you are junior counsel. That is the reality. So I spoke about lawyers, some unscrupulous lawyers. They went and fought the signature of a high court judge. So then I looked for the judge who had since retired. So I asked him, I said, oh, says this letter here? Apparently you signed the letters of administration giving these people powers to administer all of this land and they eventually got title. He told me two issues are problematic. Number one, that's not my signature. Number two, that document was signed when I had since retired. So then, what we did, we insisted that both of those titles cancelled. But these guys have already been paying millions of things. So today I am still insisting and saying, I want these guys to return that money. Because now the titles were cancelled after we made a lot of noise. So the titles got cancelled. And so I have since been saying, now that the titles were cancelled, these guys were paid based on fake titles. Let them return that money. That has yet to happen. KCCA. The SG has been telling us about the land thing in Jita. It's very unfortunate. We have been saying, look, this place here is full to capacity. About 36 acres, but since 1996, it's been a heap and it got oversaturated. So they percentage some other land in Dundu, in Mokono, other than 36 acres. But they have failed to get the place ready. Anyway, the example I'm going to give about this is here. You normally hear of these traders who they want to sell off the streets. So these guys came up with a brilliant idea. And they said, now these vendors here want to get a place for them. That's supposed to be a good thing, right? They went in downtown Kampala in the same. Identified 10 acres of land. Most of that land are is wet I went to see it. What it took a hoots with the vendor of the land. And then they said, we are going to, we, we need a hundred million US dollars for these 10 acres. You people buy land in Uganda, right? What that means is that each acre of land was to cost 10 million dollars. This is just land, that is not a building or anything. Just, just land, land, land. Most of which was waste. But then they were convincing us that each acre 
is going to cost 37 billion shillings. That's the grant, you know, about 37.5 billion when you do the transfer. How does that make sense? Even in Dubai, a name of land does not cost 37 billion. It does not. Just land. Not having a structure. But so they said, we now want to take these vendors to that land. I said, but you feel. So we pushed back, made a lot of noise. It was to say, you know? And up to now, what happened? Because the deal was meant to be cut sometime last year. But we said, no, this nonsense cannot happen. But that's an example of many other things that happen, which we may never get to know about. We went to Uganda Printing and Publishing Corporation. Among many things that were happening there, really. the Electoral Commission, after an election, it's meant to gazette those that have won an election at different levels. And the law says the Electoral Commission can only gazette with the Uganda Gazette, which is run by Uganda Printing and Publishing Corporation. That's the law. So they don't have the option of going to monitor vision or whatever the case may be. So because of the late period from all the people that had won, including councillors, UPPC charged them 15.4 billion. Now, some sharp fellows within UPPC said we are the ones who brought this deal. So we must be given commission, 10%. So they shared 1.54 billion. So I asked them, I said, you people have been paid commission this same year. I said, how does this make sense? That we are the ones who brought the business to UPPC. I asked them, what does the law say? Because the law says, the electoral commission is meant to gazette only in the Uganda Gazette, which is run by UPPC. So when you say that you convince them to give you business, and so you design the commission, how does that make sense? Just think about it. Today they haven't defined that time. We went after you many years. Maybe some of you are following. Some lousy didn't be there. We pushed and pushed and got evidence. And then he admitted how he had given a hundred million to a board to reappoint him. But for him to do that is because he knew there were so many deals there again. So many. Yes, I talked a bit about civil aviation authority. Yes. And Uganda Airlines. Which report was thrown out the window by this very corrupt woman. Let me cite for you two examples about that airline of ours. You know, when you talk about these things, some people say we don't like our country. People were buying tickets, some of these regular flyers to Dubai and so forth. Somebody buys a ticket and recycles that ticket over 10 times without paying. They pay, pay once. But because they are in a hoots with the officials of the airline, so the ticket is not closed, as it is called technically. So you buy the ticket once and you fly with it 10 times. So you got an airline that's making a loss of about 500 billion in a very short time. And then I saw ministers saying, ah, you say, you just look like a country, airlines make losses. Okay, yes, they make losses. But how are we making our losses? Because those are billions of shillings being, because it was to spend fuel and so on. But then people are flying for free under the guise of having paid. But they cannot pay once. And many, many other precarious things that were happening there. Where the MD had a boyfriend who had a company and she, without following procurement, gave the boyfriend's company a deal worth, I forget the exact figure, some billion of shillings. We did some digging up and discovered she founded the company with him. And when we talk about these things, we are enemies of the country. People have been following the debate of the war hospital. Yes. Which I said, I'm not going to keep quiet about this one. We have so far injected 600 billion shillings into the war hospital. So I went with a couple of leaders, some of these are here. So they want to do our oversight role. They denied us access. You know, we stood somewhere and beeped. 
and we were not seeing anything. So I told my colleagues, you know, it is possible to see a building in an underground hospital. Maybe that's why we cannot see it. But today, the 600 million shillings cannot be accounted for. And they told us to give us an update about it. I'm addressing the question of money. Those who say that we don't have money to deal with these situations. When you people travel back to Uganda, you normally use the internet express road. Not so. Do you know that that road is one of the most expensive roads in the world? That road costs 476 million US dollars. Each kilometer costs 9.2 million dollars. The average, according to the computations and those that have done the prognostications, was going to be about 2 million dollars per kilometer. But the sharp fellows blew the finger. And so when I hear some people in government huffing and puffing how they have fixed infrastructure, but at what cost? Because all of these are debts which your children, your grandchildren and mine will have to pay. And so we have got money. Let me end with this one. Parliament of Uganda has been constructing its chambers, new chambers. Because the people who decided every village must become a constituency and all of that nonsense. Those chambers were meant to be completed in 2019. They kept pushing and pushing. Then at some point, as I was digging that, said that ah, money has not been as available. I said, but wait a minute. So I did some more digging that. This is another war. I want to start very soon when I go back. You know I like starting trouble. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Parliament rates kingdom. You people know kingdom? It's a, uh, I cannot pay whatever. Where's the money was? Do you know who the owner is? Sudil slash all those other names. Parliament spends 9 billion shillings by year on rent. There's another poll with chambers. Parliament spends 4.5 billion shillings on rent for office space for MPs and staff. Then there's another poll development house, for about 6 billion or thereabout. So you're saying you don't have money to complete your structure, which would make sure you're not renting. But then you have billions that you're spending to rent. Your guess is as good as mine. The owners of the structure are trying to deal with the leadership of the institution to say, look, delay that project. Because you see, once the project ends, these guys want to get the billions. And that's how they divide. As I invite